We're going to try to stump Paul Ham. Here we go, man. Uh, a little under the weather, but I'm going to keep that energy. Uh, not feeling very well, but it's okay. The show must go on. So uh, let's stump Paul Ham. I'm going to try in a minute. Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome to Light Late Horror Show. I am Dino. As always, it is Thursday night, trivia night. But man, this one's dedicated to Paul Ham. We are going to try to stump him. Uh, oh, my God. This was hard, man. This was hard because I'm like, I'm like, oh, my God. What do I pick? What I anyways. Uh, OK, I think you can do it. Dino. <laughs> I can do it because there, there are some hard questions to be had. But um. I will take this as it it, it rolls off. Let, let's see. Let's see how it goes. But anyways, let me say hi to everybody. That, thank you for showing up, Paul Ham. Uh, I made a whole thumbnail on everything. I got you on a little tree. Stump Paul Ham so on a little stump. So, you know, I think that's kind of cool. So um, really quick. Yeah, under the weather, but I'm doing okay. Um, you know, my son got sick. His trainer got sick. I got sick. Uh, just that time of the year again, but there you go. Anyways, um, hello to Duck Dodgers. Paul Ham, of course, I'm truly honored. Yeah, well, listen, you know. Uh, Mill Maple Tree, this is going to be so much fun. Yes, I hope so. It always it always is. We always have fun. Uh, and man, it knowing that you're getting pizza and you're getting ready to hang out, so awesome to hear. Horror Junkie for Life, good to see you. Connie Clary, uh, J. Laura, what's going on? Cootie Season. Yeah, it certainly is, man. Um, let's see. Laura is here. Harry Scott is here. Hi, boy. Donuts is always a Donald Duck Apple Juice. Um, let's see. Medella Radcliffe. Um, I enjoy listening and reading the chat. It helps me relax and fall asleep. Such good company. Enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I think that's probably it right now. Let's we can get going. Oh, horror chunky for life. Thank you very much. Uh, $5 super chat. Hope you feel better soon. Dino might want to fix a hot toddy tonight, right? Um, thank you, Horror Junkie. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I really do appreciate that. And the super chats I sent in the stream, man. Thank you, thank you uh, to everybody who uh, supports the channel. Before I get started, Paul Ham, uh, I got to do my thing and tell, uh, you know, thumbs up, everybody. Thumbs up. Subscribe. Hit the bell notification. Check out the links below. Uh, joining the channel, you get, uh, you know, you, you support the channel. Anyways, um, <laughs> with that said, uh, overnight tonight, you guys, I, I did want to go through this real quick. It'll just take a minute. Um, I do got, for the most part, it's a rare mixed bag compilation overnight tonight, the old time radio shows. I wanted to go through them really quick, one by one, uh, really fast, just to let you know what you're in for. It's, you know, th there's a, a single episode of Fantasy, it's called, from 1947. Uh, Entity from the Void. I'm not sure if any of you have heard it before, but it is a really, really good sci-fi episode. And uh, I think this is the one and only one they ever made. And uh, it is really, really good. So that's to kick us off tonight. Uh, the second one is Bishop and the Gargoyle from 1940. It's not what you think. And it's a very interesting episode too. And it's I, that's it. Um, and then we got Sherlock Holmes, Space Patrol. You guys all know. Uh, then we, then I threw in some comedy throughout tonight. Uh, At Home with the Crab Trees, high school dance dress from 1951. It's kind of like The Great Gildersleeve, but it, it's it's a very very funny episode. I listened to all of these last night, so I took my time in putting this together. Um, then of course we got The Whistler. Then behind the front page, the Ed Robbins story from 1948. It's not how it sounds either because it's 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 played in a dramatized way and the characters in there. It's a very, very good uh, story. Um, then the Cobbs I got. It's another one like kind of like Burns and Allen's a little bit. 
um, crim criminal at large, and then drama critics circle theater. Uh, it's a streetcar na named desire. It has Marlon Brando, Jessica Tandy, and Kim Hunter. It is 1948. They do lines from the movie. So it's an interesting way they went about it. So you guys should really enjoy that. Uh, I even threw in a, a Western, El Lobo Rides Again. It, it was the one and only they ever made, 1949. Even though they're audition shows and they're one-offs, they're so good, some of these. Um, let me see. Is there anything else that stands out? Uh, do you believe in ghosts? That's a very cool 15-minute one. Um, Duluth News with Jim Payton reporting from 1948. I thought that was neat to throw in at the very end of the stream tomorrow morning. So lots of cool stuff. You, you, all, you know, Dangerous Assignment, you got uh, a Ranger Bill. I'm not sure if anybody's heard those before, but um, some good stuff in there, you guys, just letting you know. Uh, oh, Harry Scott. Hello. Hello. WTF Horn Sci-Fi. Hey, Paul, when he stumps you, do you lose a limb with Hangman until you have gone? <laughs> right. Uh, boy, I could have done that, right? D Hangman. Now there's this there's a fun game, right? Hangman. Uh, every time uh, you get a, a wrong answer, we hang. Oh, that's I, I can do something with that. The lovely Sherry is in the chat. Hey, what is going on? Uh, definitely good to see you, the lovely Sherry. Um, from a, a few other uh, streamers out there, so I know who you are. Uh, good to have you here. Um, okay, so let's get to this. Listen, I, I don't want to waste no time. We're here to stump Paul Ham because Paul Ham wins everything. <laughs> he knows his horror. Only thing I say, Paul Ham, this is Scout's Honor, okay? CM, what's going on? Good to see you. This is Scout's Honor. That's all I can say. Hopefully you don't got something sitting next to you to where you type in. Let's try to do this. I know you know a lot of knowledge on horror, but Scout Sander, let's let's try to just do this by when I, you know, tell you the the question, you you give me an answer. So here we go. We're gonna start it right off. JLR, what's going on? Good to see you. Uh, good to see you. Um. Anyways, oh, you know what else I should tell you guys real quick? Uh, we got a good weekend here. We got a good weekend. Saturday. Uh, we are going to do Unscrambled again. So it's going to be all 80s movies. Unscramble the word. I'm going to make it a little bit harder this time. Um, so get in store for that. And then me and Dave Plouffe on Sunday will be in be doing another Cold Check. Uh, episode 5, I do believe, The Werewolf um, from Cold Check, The Night Stalker, the TV series. Um so yeah, so there you go. That's the weekend. I should have a new episode of Astroville up tomorrow. So hopefully you guys enjoy that. And uh, yeah, Jen Jean, what is going on? Poetic Justice. It's been a long time since I've seen you. Hello, Poetic Justice. Okay, so listen, the rest of everybody in the chat, you can have fun. If Paul seems to be stumped and you know the answer, throw it in the chat. <laughs> but... This is all about having fun here and trying to stump Paul Ham. And Paul, here we go. And I, you know, you're only getting so much time too, because I listen over 30 seconds, you could have searched it up. Right. And I'm I know that you're you're not, but I'm just saying I've got to give a limited time here. So if you don't know it, maybe say so in the chat, and then that'll give others kind of a chance to come back with uh, an answer if they know it, you know, it, it might happen. I don't know. Uh, if Paul Ham don't know it, who would? Uh, <laughs> okay. Don't just easy work for me. Yeah. Okay. I'm going, I'm going to be so busy this weekend, not much sleep coming my way. I'll probably miss the weekend fun stuff. Sadly. It's all right. Uh, horror junkie. Uh, you're here when you have to be. Okay. First, first question for Paul Ham. Some of these might be easy for Paul Ham. But then some of them are, I know are going to, they should stump them. You will shock me if if you get all of these. Yeah, let's see. Let's see. Here we go. Uh, answer or question number one. Hammer, Hammer Horror, Hammer's Karnstein trilogy of films is loosely based on which novella 
by J. Sheridan Le Fanu. H Hammer's Karnstein trilogy of films is loosely based on which novella by J. Sheridan Le Fanu? Do you know that, Paul Ham? And we, there is ticking. It's ticking. <laughs> Give him 15 seconds to answer, right? If he knows it, he knows it. If he don't, he don't. So, uh, yeah, let, let's see if he knows it. Oh, this is so funny. Oh, boy. Uh, I, listen, I, I'm going to keep ones we stump them on. There's going to be a loss column and a win column for him. Oh, see, I mean, that's kind of fast enough to have looked it up, but that's okay. He got the correct answer. There you go. Carmilla. Carmilla, that is the correct answer. Uh, the Karnstein trilogy of films is loosely based on uh, the Nava by J. Sheridan Lafanu. Carmilla. Carmilla. So, uh, listen, there's harder ones than that, Paul Ham. So, he, he gets one in the win column. Win, loss. Okay, so there you go. We're starting it off pretty good. So, um, next question. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Okay, next question. Here we go. The Reptile 1966 features a character who turns into a snake-like creature. In which fictional English village is this film set? The Reptile 1966 features a character who turns into a snake-like creature. In which fictional English village is this film set? Okay, and, you know, I need a timer here. Mr. Mike Presley, new subscriber here from Toronto. Really enjoy the channel, especially the paranormal guest interviews and the old-time radios. Uh, good, awesome. Good to have you, Mr. Mike Presley. Uh, definitely good to have you. Uh, one pumpkin. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, that's 20 seconds. Yeah, 20 seconds. I got to limit you to 30 seconds, Paul Ham. Uh, so I'm getting a timer set for this next one. Um, timer. Um, yes, 30 seconds is all you're going to get. Um, um, okay, so, and I'm taking the first answer. So we stumped Paul Ham. It is not Cornwall. It is not Cornwall. I am sorry for that, Paul Ham. The correct answer is Clegmore Heath. Clegmore Heath is the correct answer. So one win and one loss. So we stumped him there. We stumped Paul Ham. Uh, way to go, uh, Dino. <laughs> Clegmore Heath, now you good. No, no. Two. First answer, that's it. 30 seconds, and 30 seconds will go by fast. Uh, definitely nice to meet you. Um, uh, Mr. Mike Presley, uh, Miss Loyal was Presley, oh, uh, but definitely good to see you. Um, horror Junkie for Life gifted one late, late horror show membership to WWM. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I thought of the filming location. Oh, Paul Ham was thinking of the filming location. See, this is what we're in for tonight. I mean, the dude knows his horror, so okay. Um, thank you, Horror Junkie for Life, for the membership to WWM. And by the way, I will post tomorrow uh, in, in the afternoon uh, movie uh, and the link for movie night. So we will have movie night tomorrow uh, unless I really go downhill in this fill and sick. But I think I should be all right. I'm, I'm kind of just even keeled here with it. So, um, yeah, so there you go. Um, it was... It was Clegmore Heath. So there you go. Um, okay. Okay. So next question. Next question uh, for Paul Ham is, this one should be an easy one. See, I mean, it's hard to get hard questions. <laughs> okay. So which 1972 Hammer film, a unique entry into their repertoire, blends horror with kung fu action and features Dracula resurrection in 1901 Hong Kong. Only 30 seconds. Here we go. Only 30 seconds, Paul Ham. You should know this. Sweet Indigo, what is going on? Good to see you. 10 seconds. Well, maybe 30 seconds is too short. Adino, have a question for Paul. Check Discord. Uh, okay, will do. Um, 20 seconds. You, you only got 10 more seconds, Fahim. Then I'm stopping. Um, okay, listen, I've got to do that, do it that way, right? Because if his brain knows it, up oh, oh, 30 seconds, up oh, too late, too late, Paul. Uh, 
Oh God. Okay. Uh, let's see. Do I give that to him? Uh, it was so close. Legend of Seven Golden Vampires. He did answer. So yes. Um, Legend of Seven Golden Vampires. So yeah, you know what? Reset. That was 30 seconds. I give it to you, Paul Ham. You got two wins and one in the loss column. So good for you. Uh, let's see. Uh, Connie says she has one in Discord. So let me let me check Discord and see what Connie had. Uh, let's see. Oh, okay. Uh, well, let's do this for Connie threw in a, a question here. Um, trivia question. Um, what, see, if I knew the answer, um, Mr. Mike Presley, that's very cool. Paul Ham can answer it. Uh, 30 seconds, Paul Ham, 20 seconds now. Answer Mr. Mike Presley's if you know it, but if you don't, that's okay. Um, uh, you know, I actually, sorry, Mike. Uh, yeah, let's go with that. And then I'll get to Connie's the, the, be interactive here. Um, <laughs> trivia question. Where is night of living dead? Director George Romero buried. Uh, do you know Paul Ham? Offhand. Not a movie question per se, but deals with the horror. So there you go. Unknown soldier tomb, Duck Dodgers. I don't know the answer. So yeah, uh, Paul Ham. <laughs> Give us the answer. No idea. Okay, well, you stumped Paul Ham. No idea where he's, am I going to, no idea. Mr. Mike Presley, let us know where he is buried. I, I should, for some reason I should know this, but I, yeah, I don't know this. Um, okay. So Connie, uh, Cleary, uh, has got a question for you, Paul Ham. He's not dead. Duck Dodger says he's not dead. George Romero is not dead. Yeah. He's, he's walking around somewhere. Okay. Paul Ham, here we go. Connie says, what movie house is on the other side of Hammer Studios? What movie house is on the other side of Hammer Studios? What movie house is on the other side of Hammer Studios? If you know the question, what horror house uh, is on the other side of Hammer Studios? Okay, so uh, buried in Toronto, Mr. Mike Presley. He's buried in Toronto? How dare he? George Romero is, is in Canada buried. Oh, how dare he? The great, the great white North. Okay. So, uh, yes, let's see if, uh, Paul Ham knows that. Um, and then I will tell you if you are right, uh, buried in Toronto. Wow. Um, okay. So 15 seconds, Paul Bray studios. No, uh, Connie was referring to, uh, what let's put it this way. What horror, house from a movie is next to hammer studios so let's put it that way iconic horror house okay unfortunately not here in pittsburgh scarred god what is going on ha ha uh so let's see if bray uh, no it's not bray studio so um he's the living dead so not buried uh, very funny. Uh, very funny. So I don't think Paul Ham knows. I'll give him a, a few more seconds because I kind of, you know, asked a little bit differently. But um, yeah, iconic horror house from a horror movie. So um, there you go. Um, okay, house that dripped blood. Okay, no, Paul Ham. That's a, I'm going to consider that a loss. Two for two. Um, it is the Rocky Horror Picture Show Castle. Rocky Horror Picture Show Castle. So uh, good one, Connie Clary. Connie stumped Paul Ham. How about that? There you go. Mill Maple Tree. My kids just watched an episode about George Romero on Moonstrom, but they said they didn't mention that. Um, and interesting. Bates Motel, Adams Family. Yes, Paul Ham. It is the Rocky Horror Picture Show Castle. Uh, so there you go. Yeah, you know what? I, talking about horror here, uh, man, if you guys have not started watching uh, the series From, it's just called From. So horror, uh, it's like The Lost, but horror, 
it's it's very good very good uh kathy hello good to see you let's do the time warp again and again and again harry scott i could do it over and over and over okay so next question for paul ham next question for paul ham okay in the 1957 film, The Curse of Frankenstein, who played the character of Elizabeth, Victor Frankenstein's cousin and fiance? In the 1957 film, The Curse of Frankenstein, uh, ticker's clicking, uh, who played the character of Elizabeth, Victor Frankenstein's cousin and fiance? There you go, Paul Ham, huh? Do you know the actress's name? Is that on Prime, Dino? It is Horror Junkie. Uh, although I think it's, uh, if you have AMC or something like that, you might need a free trial, but it's worth it to watch. I don't know. It's really good. Oh, 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 okay. I stopped that, and in 30 seconds he got it. So a win for you, Paul Ham. Uh, yes, it is Hazel Court. Hazel, how the heck did you get that? How did you get that so fast? Well, I mean, you either get it fast or it takes a while because you don't know. So Hazel Court, okay. Uh, very good, Paul Ham. Uh, yes, it is. Um, uh, 1957 film, The Curse of Frankenstein, a Hammer horror film who played the character of Elizabeth, Victor Frankenstein's cousin and fiance. It was Hazel Court. Hazel Court. Okay, damn. Damn. Okay, so he's winning so far. Romero is in Necropolis Cemetery in Toronto, uh, Cabbage Town area, Mr. Mike Presley. Very cool. Thank you for the uh, info. Uh, Rocky Horror takes me back a million years. Uh, oh, back when you could, you used to go to the theater and dress up and people would throw stuff and it was, Oh my God, we had that here, and I think they still do at times, but it used to be like every weekend during Halloween season. But anyways, um, next question, next question, here we go. Um, and if you guys haven't been checking out the shorts that I've been putting up, uh, the classic actors and actresses uh, shorts, it's like a little short one minute bio on them, it, it, I'm, I'm really those are really cool. If, if you like uh, the actors and actresses from the early years, you know, from silent 30s, 40s, uh, definitely check that out. Um, so let's get to Paul Ham and let's get to the next one. Cedar Lee, you got that right, Connie Clary. Uh, that is exactly it. Question, says Scarred God, who was technical advisor on The Devil's Reign, 1975? Hint. He's not a no name. Okay, we'll do that. Listen, if somebody's got a really. Wait, wait. Paul Ham did. Did Paul Ham answer it that quick? Is it Anton LaVey? Because I don't know. De the Devil's Reign. I'm not going to look it up. So, Scarred God, tell us if that's true. Uh, that that would be very good and very fast, Paul Ham. Devil's Reign. Okay, Satanic Panic. I can see that. Hint, he's not a no-name. Uh, Paul Ham, very good, very good. Yes, Anton LaVey. I do believe that that is correct, my good man. Paul Ham winner, yes, yes, I. I that's right. Uh, height of satanic panic, I'm giving you a point for that. Four on the win and two on the loss. Uh, listen, I've got a lot of questions. I'm going to stump you. Um, Anton LaVey, yes, technical advisor, so there you go. Uh, can you imagine that today, getting somebody like Anton LaVey to like be a technical advisor or something? Anyways, uh, there'd be a lot of trouble. Okay, uh, let me get to the next one. Okay, here we go, Paul I am. And I'm only giving you 30 seconds. So, question, in the 1964 film The Gorgon, the curse turns victims into stone. What is the name of the titular Gorgon in the film? Do you know the name of the 
the Gorgon in the film. So there you go. Um, I can only give you so much time. So here we go. Grant, what is going on? What is going on? Paul is hard to stump. Yeah. Four pumpkins already. Four pumpkins and two, two rotted apples. Rotten apples. How about that? Rotten apples and pumpkins. Rotten apples. Rotten apples. And again, uh, uh, I trust them. Um, Oliver Reed. Uh, stop. Um, so, what? Oliver Reed? Wait, wait, why did you say Oliver Reed? Paul Ham. See, I I should take your first one. <sighs> okay, 30 seconds, you got it. You know, it, it is Megara, Megara. So you got your fifth point. Damn it. Dang it. Megara, yes. Oh, the Gorgon, the curse turns them into stone, the victims into stone. What is the name of the Gorgon in the film? It is Megara. You misspelled it, but that's okay. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, good idea. Change approved. Uh, Oliver Reed was answering the musketeer question. Oh, wait. Listen, I asked the question. So unless you guys come up with a really good. Um, oh, did Grant ask you a question? Let's see. Yeah, what was the question? This musketeer played a werewolf. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Got you. There you go. Yeah, yeah, Oliver Reed. Okay, I missed that, uh, Grant, when you put it up there. Um, we are laughing and loved your response. <laughs> that is so funny. Okay, so, uh, okay, you know what? I, I am going to mark these, and I am going to go to, okay, I'm going to do something just a little bit different here. Okay. Okay, Paul Ham. Question. The 1969 film The Double heavily influenced the giallo genre. Which actor, no, known for his roles in spaghetti westerns, played the lead male role? And go. You know what? You probably will get this, but... Uh... You probably will get to, get to, I know I'm going to go to the harder questions here in a second. Um, Cause I, I, listen, I know Paul Ham is, is he knows his giallo also, but yeah, let's see. Come on. Eight more seconds. And this is it. Eight more seconds. Okay. Let's see. 30 seconds. And that means he don't know it. You were thinking too long and you did not know it, Paul Ham. So I stumped you, 31, 32, 30, it's 35, 36, 37, 38. We're up to 40 seconds. So yeah, no way. You either don't know it, so you don't know. It. Okay, so I stumped you, Paul Ham. He's a mainstay, Clint Eastwood. No, no. Let me. I will first read the question again. The 1969 film, The Double, also known as Los Strana, Vizio, uh, forget it, I ain't it or Blade of the Ripper, heavily influenced the giallo genre, which actor known for his roles in spaghetti westerns played the lead male role, and he would go on to play other lead male roles in giallo films. The answer is George Hilton. George Hilton. Paul Ham says James Mason. Uh, Lee Van Cleef. Um, so yeah, no, George Hilton. Anybody who knows giallo or who have listened to me on this channel talk about 40 plus films of giallo uh yes it is george hilton george hilton um so yeah five to three five and the, five pumpkins and three rotten apples a european sway grant says okay here we go what is the airspeed velocity of an unladen swallow what the heck Oh, come on, Grant. Oh, you're somebody can look it up and find out, but yeah, yeah, no, let's uh let's move on from there. <laughs> so stump them. There you go. Uh this one's too easy. So I don't think okay. I tell you what, here's another Giallo one. Get ready, Paul Ham. Which 19 
Which Giallo film with a title references, referencing a specific color involves a series of murders followed by the reading of a deceased Lord's will? So which Giallo film with a title referencing a specific color involving a series of murders following the reading of a deceased Lord's will? Do you know that? Go. 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 Paul Ham, go. Okay, I have no idea. George Hilton was safe guest for sure. Scarred God. Yeah, yeah. Um, probably one of the bigger known names when it comes to male actors for the Giallo. Uh, I won't keep doing Giallo, but I want to, you know, I got to get some points on my side here. Uh, 20 seconds, um, 35 miles per hour. It's got to be quicker, f faster than that. I don't know who George Hilton is, the CM. You got to know. Okay, 30 seconds. That's actually 34 seconds. So I guess I stumped Paul Ham again. Bay of Blood. Nope. Four, four rotten apples and five pumpkins. Uh, it is not Bay of Blood. It is not Bay of Blood. CM, you know your Giallo films. Come on. Um, it is. Wait, where am I at here? Uh, the 1971 Giallo film with a title referencing a specific color involving a series of murders following the reading of a deceased Lord's will is The Night Evelyn Came Out of the Grave. The Night Evelyn Came Out of the Grave. So there you go. Uh, stumped him again. Stumped him again. Yeah. Oh, I love it. Um, <laughs> Uh, let's see. Okay. So um, actually I'll go up here. Um, and let's see. Okay. Let me, let me look at the chat real quick. Wah, wah, wah. The purple plume, plume of savage vengeance. Oh, see, I'm coming up with titles. We're going to do that again real quick. Uh, very soon. We're going to do come up with your own Giallo movie title. Uh, so yes, yes, yes. Uh, red queen, deep red, the red zone. Uh, so yes, I stumped Paul ham. So we are, uh, five pumpkins and four rotten apples. Um, Hey there, Bill Boyer. What is going on? Good to see you. Okay. Okay. N no giallo this time. Let's, let's, uh, let's give you another one here. Uh, Paul ham. Let me reset. Um, the 1950. I'm just going to, okay, I shouldn't throw out the name. The 1950s film, Curse of the Demon, the 1957 film, Curse of the Demon, also known as Night of the Demon, revolves around a cursed parchment that brings doom to anyone who possesses it. Who directed this atmospheric horror gem? Do you know Paul Ham? And go. That's all I'm saying. Listen, I, I got to get some points, too. I got to stump them. All hail Giallo, scarred God. You better believe it. Uh, love, love, love that genre. 50-50 um, on a lot of them, you know, but it is what it is. Uh, never seen one, at least intentionally, Duck Dodgers. Oh, my God. Uh, I covered over 40 of them here um, on the channel. 30 seconds. Stop, and I will give an extra few seconds here. Uh, time is up, Paul Ham. I know that one, says Francis McCloskey. Uh, if you do, um, let me know. Now that song is in my head, Harry. Uh, so I stumped Paul Ham again. Five rotten apples, and he's got five pumpkins. Oh, no, no. Ugh. Okay, I know that there's a delay sometimes, so I'm going to take that point away and give it back to you. So, yes. So Jacques Turner, Jacques Turner. So I, I will give that to you, um, hoping that you didn't look it up. That was like 30, 30 seconds on my thing, 35, 40, 40. Uh, but anyways, uh, Jacques Turner. So there you go. I answered. Yes, you did, Paul Ham. Uh, so I, I got you down. You got six pumpkins and four rotten apples so so you you got it good one i answered i you know what and see i'm very impressed on that very impressed 
I am out of my league, says Broken Prophet. <laughs> yeah, well, listen, we I think a lot of us, that's why I, I created a whole stream just for Paul Ham. You have a big delay, Dino, Duck Dodgers. I know, that's why I'm going to, if I don't hear from Paul, I'll give it 10 seconds, 15 more seconds. I, I'm just trying to give some time parameters, and I kind of see that he's delayed probably by 10 seconds or so. Uh, so no worries, no worries. I, I'll put it back. I'll put it to 40 seconds now. How about that? Six, six pumpkins on a fence, four rotten apples. Paul Ham, man, you know, what? I tell you what, good sport, buddy, for even for even doing this and, and like having fun with us. You know what I mean? And me trying to stump you uh, the best I can. But um, and I'm not doing a very good job so far. I'm doing OK. Uh, do you know duck means that he's never seen a purple people eater in person? Oh, geez. Uh, gotcha. AJ star hiker. What's going on, AJ? Uh, it was good, uh, seeing you on video and talking on the, um, the members only, uh, costume Halloween party. So that was really good, which by the way, is always there. You guys, anybody who joins up as a member uh, becomes a member, the links always there to pass streams and stuff like that. So, uh, there you go. Um, Let's see. AJ Starhiker had a question. Uh, in Metropolis, which pagan god did Freder associate with the Undercity machine? Uh, go ahead, Paul Ham. In Metropolis, which pagan god did Freder associate with the Undercity machine? Let me know if you know it or not, Paul Ham. I will give you 40 seconds starting now. Um, as I read some of these, Hey, Leanne Roche, blessed Sam Hine. Happy Halloween. Good to see you, Leanne Roche. I'm still claiming being a horror junkie. I am when it comes to books, at least. Oh, horror junkie. Listen, I'm a horror junkie too, but do I know all these? No, my mind can't retain a lot of this stuff. No, no, not at all. So anyways, um, let's see if, uh, he knows that offhand. Um, your desk is interesting. I'm trying to take it all in, says Mill Maple Tree. Oh God, this is nothing. You should see past streams where where is he correct, AJ Star Hiker? He says Wotan. Wotan. Uh, because I actually don't know. See? Um let's see. I suck at directors. I have a story. Hey, I have a story. Good to see you. Uh AJ, is that correct? Ban, he strikes. What? Um, let's see. Yeah, great sport. Definitely. Uh, having fun with this. So is it Wotan? Um, is it? Come on, AJ, you got to be quick with me. Moloch. Moloch, says AJ Starhiker. So that's that's one in the loss column. Five rotten apples. You couldn't answer that? Metropolis is like one of the most popular silent... Listen, it's sci-fi, but it's considered in that genre. So, yes, I, I give it a, yeah, hand, fit, hand thumbs down. <laughs> Ooh, poo, I watched Metropolis and can't remember. Oh, the tree, tree beard, tree beard family. I can't remember all the films I've seen, but I do remember some facts. <laughs> Listen, Paul Ham, dude, you, you unbelievable, unbelievable. I, I, I don't know what more to say. Um, let, let me get to it. Okay. You guys are coming up with one. Okay. Come. Um, I have a list of questions, people. Okay. We'll do one more from, uh, Mr. Mike Presley. Uh, go ahead, Paul Ham. Uh, who played the male lead in the 1971 horror? No, 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 no. You know, what? actually, no, sorry. Uh, that's Charlton Heston. That's way too easy. Mr. Mike Presley for our good friend, Paul Ham. Uh, he would have got that in a second. Uh, in a second. So Charlton Heston is the answer. And uh, yeah, so there you go. Um, okay, next question for you, uh, Paul Ham, is, here we go. Wow. Okay. The classic 1968 film, Night of the Living Dead, was co-written by George A. Romero and which other screenwriter? Go. Let's see if you know that. Charlton Heston. Oh, God, that was way too easy. Um, yeah, no point there, Paul Ham. No, no, no. <laughs> but you are going on that question I just told you. So it was flashed full screen when the machine exploded and injured dozens of workers. Wow. The lightning and architecture. 
so yeah, yeah. The question uh, being, it's 1968 uh, film *Night of Living Dead* was co-written by George A. Romero and which other screenwriter? Um, Forty. 40 seconds, 45 seconds. Hell, we're getting close to a minute. Okay, so uh, it looks like, okay, Grant, throw it out there, buddy. Uh, it looks like you didn't get it, Paul. I'm, I can't give it to you now. I mean, it's like 50 seconds. Oh, how big is your delay, man? Um, how big is, listen, I trust you. That's your first guess. I'm going to give you a point. Uh, even though it was 55 seconds on mine, um, I, yeah, there's a delay. I don't, it can't be that far of a delay, but John Russo is the correct answer. You've got seven pumpkins and five rotten apples. So yes, it is John Russo, uh, co-wrote, uh, that movie, um, Night of Living Dead with George A. Romero. So there you go. Um. Let me go over here. Did I, I don't want to ever miss anything in the chat over here. Okay. Uh, maybe Paul should have gone live. Yeah. I, you know what? I, if, if Paul would have been able to, uh, I, I definitely would have done that. Paul, if I put the link in the description, could you come on with only audio? Could you come on with only audio right now? I will give you a minute to answer. If I put a link in the description to join me on your phone or whatever you're watching, you can only do audio, so it's fine. Uh, can you do that? Can you do that? Um, after answering Grant's question, let me know. This horror anthology features a story by Alexis Konstantinovich Tolstoy. Uh, so, and then Paul Ham says Black Sabbath. Black Sabbath, big delay, big delay. Yeah, see, I need you on here with me. If you, if I can, I can put a link right now in there, Paul, and you can join me and we can listen to our voices. So you tell me, can you do it? If so, can't, ah, okay. No worries, no worries, it's all good. Um, but uh, did you answer Grant's question? Did you answer is Black Sabbath? This horror anthology, you can't all oh, the understand. I know I would love to have Paul Ham on, but it's okay. I get it. It's a, it's understandable, uh, especially last second. This horror anthology features a story by uh, Alexei Tolstoy. Um, it's Paul Ham said Black Sabbath. What is that in reference to? Is that to Grant's question? Okay, I'm going to have to move on because I don't know. Okay, anyways, um, okay, so moving on, moving on, moving on up. Okay, so next one, next question. If anything for me, Dino, is delayed. Okay, uh, listen, I'm thinking of watching the movie Five Nights at Freddy. It's making good money, and a sequel is already in the works. My son, he's 15. He said it was awesome, but I don't think I'm watching it. <laughs> Oh, Grant's question. Is it Black Sabbath anthology? Grant? Uh, probably right. I mean, I, I take Paul Ham's word for it, but he did. Okay, Black Sabbath. Okay. Um, that one seemed hard enough. I'll give you, you got eight pumpkins and five rotten apples. Do you know how much time do you give him? Listen, I'm giving him 50 seconds. So you got to think 30 seconds to try to answer. And then 20 seconds more. So I I would think that's plenty of time. But um, again, it's all good. Uh, let, let, me, uh, let me get the next question here for you. Here we go. Here we go, Paul. In the 1935 film Werewolf of London... What rare flower is used to temporarily cure the werewolf curse? In the 1935 film Werewolf of London, what rare flower is used to temporarily curse, cure the werewolf curse? Ugh. I mean, 
kind of easy, but it's it's a hard name. It, it looks stupid, Francis. Well, again, kids and my 15-year-old loved it, but, you know, what's that say? I don't know. Uh, Paul Ham, say boo right now and see how delayed. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Oh, you know what? I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. Hold on. Uh, but let's see if he can get that. Uh, I'm on 30 seconds already. Uh, <laughs> yeah, dang, dang you, Paul. I thought it would be too hard that you, you wouldn't be able to uh, to get it. So, yes, yes, uh, you are correct. It's Marifasia Lupina Lumina. Uh, you didn't say the whole thing, but uh, Lupina Lumina. So that is the uh, name, but yeah, close enough. So I'm I'm going to so you get another one that's nine pumpkins and five rotten apples. Okay, I'm going to get some harder ones here. But let me ask you something, Paul. Okay, stay there, Paul. I want to see how how far what kind of delay we have. If you want to give yourself five or ten more seconds, that's up to you. But for, let's try our hardest to figure this out. So. I'm going to tell you right now, type something in the chat. Just put anything in the chat right now, starting now. So we can catch your, how, how, many, how much your delay is. So the, it's going, timer's going. Put something in the chat right now. Paul, Paul, anything, anything. It doesn't matter what it is. I want to see how much delay. Go on, Paul, 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 Paul. Um, 13 seconds, 14 seconds. Come on, Paul. Type something, man. Type something. Anything, anything. 20 seconds. There's no way. There's no way it's delayed that much. Something. 20. So you're delayed about 20 seconds. Okay. Okay, so okay, so we roughly know. It's about 20 seconds. So if I start my thing and from 20 seconds to... I, almost a minute would give you 20, 35 seconds, 40 seconds. Uh, so, wow. Okay. Yeah. I tell you that sucks, but at least we know now. So there you go. So it's about 20 second delay on his part. Um, he did type told you Dino is behind. Uh, yeah. He said something, right? Um, okay. So let's move on. Let's move on. Uh, Okay, here we go, Paul. 20 second delay. So I'm giving you, I'm going to give you 50 seconds. 50 seconds when after I read the question. So the 1945 British horror anthology film, Dead of Night, features how many? How many individual segments, excluding the linking narrative? Go. The 1945 British horror anthology film, Dead of Night, features how many individual segments, excluding the linking narrative? Paul Ham. Let's see. Did I stump you on this one? Give him a minute. I don't think he will cheat. No, I know. Yeah. 55 seconds a minute. Whatever. Um he said it really quick. So probably was instant in the chat. Oh, come on. Maybe Connie uh, Discord uh, has answered to Dino. Oh, no, no, we're good. This works. I trust Paul Ham. <laughs> oh, stumped him. Stumped him. And that's 40 seconds. So he answered pretty quickly. Uh, 20, 20 seconds. He answered in about, he gave himself about 20 minutes to think about it. Uh, there are five segments, Paul Ham. Five segments, five in the film. So, uh, yeah, if anyone were to uh, look up um, the 1945 British horror anthology film, Dead of Night, it features five individual segments, excluding the linking narrative. So uh, there you go. Um Okay, so not reading that one. Uh, that one's too easy. Uh, did I? 
Get that one. Okay. Uh, okay. Here's one that Grant should know because he was talking about this the other day and he just watched it. But this is going to be for Paul Ham. Um, let's see. I gave the answer with the question, Jay Lura. Uh, if Paul cheated, he would, oh, come on. He would probably know the answer. Yeah. Uh, no, no. I trust Paul. Paul's, Paul's a, a Wealth of knowledge, wealth of knowledge. And this isn't what the stream's about. The stream is to try to stump him. And so far, he's got nine right and six wrong. So here comes the next question, Paul Ham. You, you might know this. Uh, the 1967 film Vi, V-I-Y, the first horror movie produced in the Soviet Union, was based on a story by which famous famous Russian author. Go. Let's see. Let's see about that. Do you know that offhand? Uh, Pup. Is Cyberpup here? Hey, Cyberpup, if you're here. Cyberpup. Yeah, yeah. Cyberpup. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Say, it's Cyberpup. Uh, that isn't a bad uh, average for Paul. Oh, no. I mean, that's, <laughs> listen, uh, if I'm trying to stump him and he's ahead by so that's pretty damn good. So anyways, um, I wonder if Grant knows this uh, afterwards, Grant. Paul Ham is Bella knowledgeable. <laughs> Hella, I said Bella. Hella knowledgeable. Um, okay, so it looks like you guys are not going to get this. Uh, it looks like we stumped him again. Uh, Tolstoy. No, it's not Tolstoy. That is 50 seconds too. So um, it is not Chekhov. It is not Chekhov. Grant, do you know by any chance? Uh, 1967 film Vi from the Soviet Union, uh, based on the story of which famous Russian author? It is Nikolai Gogol. Nikolai Gogol is the answer. Harry Scott says, Solhinsen. Uh, okay, not. Toast story or Chekhov? Nope. I have a story. Nope, it is, uh, again, Nikolai Gogol is the author's name. So uh, there you go. Very cool. Um, stumped him again. So uh, nine pumpkins and six rotten apples. It's, he's still above 50%. That's for sure. Um, Paul Ham says, uh, thank you, uh, Jay Lara. Uh, and did I say how much I love all you guys? You guys are so fantastic, so great. Uh, the Late Late Horror Show family, uh, you guys are fantastic. Um, anyways, you guys show up for uh, for me, right? Yeah. Uh, anyways, uh, let's see. Let me get another one. Let's let's see about this one. I had something a little different too that I could fit in here. Maybe the last. Maybe after this question, I don't know. But let's see. Uh, next question, Paul. In the 1936 Universal Horror film, Dracula's Daughter, what is the name of the Count Dracula's daughter who struggles with her vampiric urges? In the 1936... Oh, go. In the 1936 Universal Horror film, Dracula's Daughter, what is the name of Count Dracula's daughter who struggles with her vampiric urges? I mean, that should be an easy one, no? Thank you, Francis. Appreciate it. And thank you for being on the Halloween stream, too. That was fun. Um, thank you, Leanne. Uh, okay, so 30 seconds. Uh, Paul Ham's got about 25 more seconds. Um, Maria, okay, yeah. I mean, that's one I thought you would know anyways. Mar Maria, Liz Maria Zaleska. Um, 10 points, 10 pumpkins, six rotten apples for Paul Ham. Uh, thank you, sweet indigo. Uh, you guys are all fantastic. You guys are great. Okay, so with that said, uh, I do have, you know, I'm going to do a, a couple more here, and then I got something else that I was going to throw his way. By the way, as I was doing all of this, I came up with a lot more really cool, different horror kind of things to do on Thursdays and Saturdays. So stay tuned for the future. But anyways, um, 
Okay, see, that's too easy. Um, <sighs> yeah, see, that one's easy. Okay, here we go. Next question. Jean, Coc Jean Cocteau's, see, I can't read it. Uh, do you guys understand what I mean? Jean Cocteau. <sighs> I should skip the question now. Jean, the last name is C-O-C-T-E-A-U apostrophe S. Jean Cocteau's. Cocteau's. Well, why can't I read that name right? You guys know my issue. 1946 film Beauty and the Beast features a living statue holding a candelabra. What is the statue's name, Paul Ham? Go. What is the statue's name? Please let me some. Zoink school with John Shaggy Rupus. Yes. <laughs> Good to have you in the chat there, John. Good old Shaggy showing up here. What's going on? Going on. How thank you, Dino, and everyone on make me welcome. Thank you, Duck Dodgers. Uh oh, Mr. Mike Presley. We can get to that after. Uh, but let me see if I can stump Paul Ham on that question. What is the name? What is the name? of that statue um duck you have a cute cat 40 seconds it sounds like a recipe recipe for the weirdest pie <laughs> um and diana dirty diane that's 55 seconds so that's roughly almost that's a minute um paul ham says diana okay so, here's the answer. Um, the answer is human arm. Human arm. Um, it's that simple. Jean Cocteau's toes. 1946 film Beauty and the Beast features a living statue, ho statue holding a candelabra. What is the statue's name? The name of that statue is human arm. So a strange name, but that's what they call it. It's the name is the human arm. So uh, there you go, uh, Paul Ham. <laughs> I stumped you on that one. Seven points, uh, seven rotten apples, and nine, ten, ten pumpkins. Ten pumpkins, seven rotten apples. So um, let's see which one. Oh, uh, somebody had a question. Um, did you answer that? Uh, Mr. Mikey Presley says, what city was Black Christmas 1974 filmed in? Uh, that should be an easy one for Paul Ham if he wants to answer that. Um, all I know is Lemure and Cogsworth. I have a story. Um, what? Human arm. Yes, that's weird. Yes, it's the name of the, yes, that's the name. Um. Which brings me to, uh, I don't know if I should switch over yet. Let's see. Hold on. Um, see if uh, he knows that answer uh, that was asked by Mr. Presley. And then I will move on to uh, the next question. And then we will move on to something different. 10. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> Toronto. So Paul has to buy all of us seven shots. Horror junkie. <laughs> Great job, Ham. Um, okay, so um, no Black Christmas. Uh, what city? Uh, Toronto. There you go. Yes, Toronto. Paul Ham. Uh, okay, Paul Ham. Next one. I can't get the idea of a pumpkin head Oscar now. I must do a piece now. Yes, pumpkin head Oscar. <laughs> uh, maybe I can find a picture of one uh, and use that. Uh, but we're not done yet. 10 pumpkins and seven rotten apples. So next question for Paul Ham. Next question is, in Mario Bava's 1960 film, Black Sunday, what is the name of the witch vampire character played by Barbara Steele? Should be easy, but go ahead. Now, I don't know why I'm giving you an easy one. doesn't need to be, but um, yeah. Go for it. Uh, I am the arm, Twin Peaks, Scarred God, yes, Twin Peaks. 
Francis is a young kid. She, she showed up at the door in the middle of the night, took two nights to get her in. Uh, Melt maple tree. I meant out of my head. I'm an artist. I need to create it and will. Haha. <laughs> Very cool, Mel Maple Tree. Artist as well. 30, 30 seconds. Uh, wait, there's more. Okay. 40 seconds. Paul Ham, do you know? Do you know? Do you know? Do I stump you? Do I stump you? 47, 48, 49, 50. I'll give you 55, 3, 4, 5. Stop. Okay, that's that's way too much time. 20 second delay, 55 seconds. I stumped you, Paul Ham. I stumped you. Eight rotten apples. The answer is the answer is Asa Vajda. Asa Vajda. Uh, in Mario Baba's 1960 film Black Sunday, what is the name of the witch vampire character played by Barbara Steele? Uh, Asa Vajda or Vada. Uh, J Silent. So there you go. Stumped you. Yeah, no, no, no. That's just took too long. Sorry, I'm not giving you that one. That literally was a minute and 15 seconds. So sorry, Paul. I do have to put a time limit on it. So there you go. My bad. Thought uh, we were done. Sorry, scarred God. No, no worries. Um, yeah, I know he answered, but it was way too late. There's got to be a time limit. A minute and 15 seconds is way too too long. Uh, and, and Paul gets it. I have a bit of an obscure question. Go ahead, Francis. Uh, as I get to um, the next, let's see, the, the one I wanted to go to. Let's see. Here we go. Um, let me look in the chat again. That delay sucks. Nothing moved for seconds. But you heard me, right, Paul? Oh. Ah, don't make me feel bad. Does, uh, could the chat just hold up for that long? Well, okay, you know what? Ah, you did answer it. And I, with YouTube and the way things are, chat is not. I give you the point because you got it. So 10, 11 pumpkins. Seven rotten apples. So sorry, Paul. Uh, even at a minute, 15 seconds, you came up with the right answer. And uh, okay. So anyways, he got it before that. So the <laughs> look at everybody <laughs> saying, hey, he got it. He got it. Um, okay. So going to do something different. I heard you, but nothing moved on the blue screen. Yeah, yeah probably YouTube. Yeah, give it to Oh, yeah. No, I can't. I gave it to him. <laughs> Paul Ham, you, you. Um, okay. So I am going to do something, Paul Ham. I'm going to name a movie, and you need to tell me the name of the monster or creature in the film. Okay, that's it's as simple as that. Okay, so. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to name a movie and you tell me the creature in the movie, the name of the creature or monster. So the movie is, and, and there's no use in doing this. Listen, I got to trust you. Say the wrong answer, or say the right answer, but eventually I got to say that's enough time. But um, because these are even easier to look up. But here we go. The name of the movie. Here we go, Paul Ham. Please, as quick as you can. If you know it, you know it. If you don't and it doesn't come to your head, please say don't know it. Okay. Um, the Keep from 1983. The Keep from 1983. What is the name of the monster or creature? Uh, we are so enjoying this evening, Mill Maple Tree. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The rest, yeah, the, the restream is lagged. Yeah, I know. So uh, the keep 1983 name of the creature or monster in that film. Okay, Harry Scott. Uh, I love when Harry lets us know he's out of the chat. He's, he's so respectful. 
I'm the monster in all of them, says Duck Dodgers. Are you? Okay. So, yeah, see, nothing's moving on the chat right now. It's it's probably a YouTube thing. So, yeah. So, I'll give you a second to say I don't know it or you know it. So, I'm going to put my phone away. I'm not going to be timing these no more. But I will look on Discord just to make sure nobody sent me anything. Let's see. Oh, am I getting other... Uh, what is that? I don't know what you sent me, Grant, but it didn't let me, didn't let me hit it. But uh, whatever. Um. Okay, so Paul Ham says, Gaelican, Gaelican. It is not Gaelican. He answered just now. Thank you, Mill Maple Tree. Uh. Well, I do see it as you guys see it. It's just, it is delayed. So it is not Gaelican. It is Molasar. Molasar. M-O-L-A-S-A-R. The Keep, 1983. The monster's name is Molasar. So uh, stumped you on that one. Uh, sorry about that, Paul Ham. Or am I? No. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Uh, Gaelican. What what is Gaelican from? Gaelican. Did you just make that up? Gaelican monster. Is that is there anything like that? Um now I don't even think that's a name. Gaken, G-A-K-K-E-N is a monster, I think. Super puck monster. Yeah, no, no, yeah, that's not a that's not a word, Paul Ham. <laughs> it's not a name. Who played Cousin It in Adam's Family? Got to make them harder than that, Mr. Mike Presley. Another shot for us. Yes, eight rotten apples and 11 pumpkins for Paul Ham. Um, let's see if I can find another one. Um, this one should be pretty easy. Uh, here we go, Paul Ham again. Here we go again. The movie is Life Force 1985. Life Force 1985. Name the monster or creature in the film. Okay. Life Force 1985. That was the one, Felix Silva. That was the one, Felix Silva. I'm, I'm not sure what that means. Uh, alternate title of the classic slasher, The Mutilator, 1984. This is Scarred God. There you go. Okay, so Life Force, 1985. Name the monster or creature's name. Um, oh, there you go. Yeah, okay. See, that seemed a little easier. So uh, Paul Ham. Uh, 11, 12 pumpkins and eight rotten apples. Yes. Space vampires from Haley's Comet. Space vampires from Haley's Comet. This is one I thought I thought I would do with you guys too. Um, you know, name the movie and name the creature or monster in the movie. I, th I thought this was kind of a cool one. Uh, we have to send Paul Ham on vacation though. So, uh, you know, you guys can get some points, but no, I'm just joking, Paul. Ham. You are correct, sir. Um, okay, so let's see. Let me get to a different one. Um, here we go. Um, the movie is Scanners, 1981. Name the, the monster's name in the film, the monster creature, the ent whatever. Um, Scanners 1981. Do you know it? Scanners 1981. Yes, a great movie. Uh, both of them. Mr. Mike Pro. Okay, we'll get to, yeah, I'll get to that in a second. Um, let's see if Paul Ham knows this one. Paul Ham, Paul Ham. Scanners 1981. It's either monster, creature, evil, character in the movie. Uh, either way. 
Um, let's see. Kevin Bacon. No. <laughs> no Kevin Bacon. No Kevin Bacon. Although a bacon sandwich with mayo sounds good right now and some tomato. Mm. Let's make it a BLT. Why not? Uh, that's all I got to say. Uh, so, yeah. Just, do you know this one, Paul Ham? Oh, wow, 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 wow. Oh, Jesus. Paul Ham. Daryl Revok. Daryl Revok. Uh, so there you go. Uh, a point for him. So another pumpkin. 10, 11, 12, 13 pumpkins and eight rotten apples. Uh, looks like you're you're better at this one than um well no, you're you're just as good on both of them, I think. Let's see. Is there another hard one for this? one I'm going to do another easy one but I want you to get it correct and nobody look it up but let's see because there's a name we know that they're they're ghost pirates but okay the movie is the fog 1980 monster's name specific name name okay the fog 1980. Let me see if you know this, uh, how quickly you know this. Played by Michael Ironside, uh, Paul Ham says. Very cool. Sorry, I have to go, CM. But no, uh, but peace and love, man. CM, uh, take care. Much love to you. Um, let's see. Okay, so Paul Ham, get that, the fog. Make sure you're very specific. Don't just say uh, ghost pirates, please. Uh, Hopefully you know exactly uh, their names uh, they go by as I stretch. Ah, this is quite fun. Uh, I like this. Stumping Paul Ham. But he wasn't stumped. It looks like he's not going to be stumped. That's for sure. Uh, let's see. Okay, as the chat stays frozen a bit. So, yeah, every, everybody's still everybody's got that delay going on, huh? Hit the thumbs up button if you haven't yet. Thank you, Horror Junkie. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, please, we are at 53 thumbs up. We should be way higher than that. Come on, if you haven't hit it yet, please do. Um, no, I want you to be... Okay, I'm, Francis. Oh, I th thought that was fine. Uh, no, Francis. Um, well, heck, that didn't even show up in my... Restream chat. That's weird. Let's see. How does it look on? Um, let's see. Do I give that to you? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll give that to you, Paul Ham. Yeah, I mean, at least you gave a name, but it was Blake and his ghost pirate crew. Okay. So, uh, yes, time for homework. Have fun, everyone. Jay Lero, thank you for stopping by, stopping in. Uh, peace and love as always. Thank you, thank you. Uh, much love. Um, it is Blake, so Paul Ham gets another point. Yeah, he is not going to be stumped tonight. So uh, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 points, 14 pumpkins, and eight. Uh, I'm going back to the other questions again. Uh, give you a couple more before we end this. Let's see. Do I got anything up here that's uh, that's a little bit harder on you here? Let's see. Um, that's easy. That's easy. That might be too hard because I don't think you would know the French name. I mean, I, listen, you might. How about I throw this out there? If anybody's got a, a question in the chat for him, go ahead. Uh, change that up. Um, oh, thank you, Leanne Roche. Uh, doubling it up. Um, but you know what? 913. You know what? Actually, I'm going to, I think, uh, it's been a long day uh, under the weather. So I'll tell you what. Um, Paul Ham could not be stumped. He could not be stumped. You, you have... 
10, 11, 12, 13, wait, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 pumpkins and eight rotten apples. So you are not stumped. So there you go, Paul Ham. We could not do it. I tried. I tried to give some hard questions. Uh, even in the chat there, we did that. I thought this was fun. I thought this gave me some ideas. I think the idea of... Uh, so Paul Ham, thank you for being so uh, cool about it and doing a whole stream with you and trying to stump you. I thought that was pretty fun. Listen, your knowledge is uh, in horror film is really, really good. And um, what can I say, man? Uh, good job. A good job. Pumpkin Oscar to you. Yes, yes, yes. Um, MOR 13, Duck Dodgers 11. This is fun. I'm glad someone is winning. Ginger 7. Oh, you guys are saying you're, oh, MOR got 13? Okay. Are you guys telling me how many you got right? Okay. Very cool. He's our man. Rah, rah, rah. He's a good sport. So, yeah, definitely a good sport, Paul Ham. And thank you very much, man. Uh, yes, welcome. It was great. Um, tried my best. I tried to diverse, diversify the questions best I could. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's kind of tough. It's kind of tough. But, uh, again, it kind of gave me some ideas. I think, uh, movies and naming the monsters in them could be a cool thing too. So, uh, yeah, with that said, also tonight, make sure you check out the, there's some rare episodes in tonight's stream. There's, there's a couple comedies mixed in there, but uh, overall, you're going to fantasy. We're starting off with the best one of the night, I think. Uh, there is another one called Destination Mars. That is a really good one. That's a few in. Um, a couple sci-fis. Uh, really good. Really good. So some sci-fis um, and, and a mixed bag of uh, different things. I haven't done that in a while. I thought doing something a little bit different would be kind of cool. Uh, hopefully Astroville out tomorrow night. Uh, check the link for members and Patreon members for movie night uh, tomorrow on both platforms uh, at 8 p.m. Eastern time. So, um, yeah, with that said, uh, thank you each and every one of you guys, Mill Maple Tree and family. Thank you for hanging around and eating some pizza while we did this. Uh, I'm glad it gave you more ideas for games. Yes, Paul, I am. Thank you. Um, you both are awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Rock and roll fans. Listen. Stop by and check out that first 